When I saw that eye, I knew I could do something about it. So with a light box, a catheter, and five ophthalmologists looking over my shoulder, I was able to perform his surgery. At the end, the next day, he looked excellent, and we saved his sight. Glaucoma still remains the leading cause of irreversible blindness in the world. So that, that's an impressive point, and that's global. Leading cause of irreversible blindness in the world. Half the people don't even know they have glaucoma because it's a silent disease. And that's one reason that we call it the sneak thief of sight. So cure glaucoma to me is all about catching that thief, putting them away. The third day into this visit, this lady comes in and she's been led in by her daughter. I had this little portable slit lamp that I was using and the daughter helped her to sit down. And I took a look in her eyes. Um, she had really high pressures. Her nerve was copped out and um, she was blind in both eyes. And uh, for a second there, I, um, I, I just sat back and I said to her, I said, well, lady, you know, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do for you. <laughs> Singularly, that changed hmm. me. She fell on the floor and in her native language, she started to wail. She had this she just, it was so agonizing, everybody started to cry. I just joined them. Her daughter who came with her, um, you know, everybody was crying, the whole room. She said her life was over, and it really was, in a country where there's no support, where there's no other options, where that means your life is finished and everybody else who is supposed to help you can't make a living because they have to stay with you. So I said to her daughter, I gathered myself and I said to her daughter, I said, um, you take a seat, let me take a look. And she was probably in her 20s, 22, 23. I took a look in this young girl's eyes. She was almost copped out and she also had a pressure in the 30s and the 40s. And um, you know, by this time I had help. Uh, they had calmed the lady down and and I said to her, I said, I couldn't help you. I didn't get here soon enough, but at least maybe we can help your daughter. She has glaucoma too. She's 20 something. And if you're blind in the US, you have a seeing eye dog, you have crosswalks, you have social services that can help you. But if you're blind in a small village in India or a small village in Africa, there are no crosswalks. There are no seeing eye dogs. You have a seeing eye child. And what typically happens is the grandson or the son will lead the father or the grandfather around. And so you, you're depriving the grandfather or the father of being a productive member of society. And then you're also depriving this, you know, five or 10 year old boy of a childhood. And with one surgery to restore that vision, you're giving two people their lives back. People are going blind. And we're not like the other doctors that are trying to improve vision. We're trying to save vision so you don't lose vision. And that's a hard thing to deal with because we don't always win. And having new procedures and new techniques is hopeful for us. And it gives us hope that, hey, we've got options here. We're not gonna be living in the past. I tell people it's not like getting your appendix out where you go get your appendix out and you're done in a few days and you get better. Well, we're hoping that our new surgery, the GAT surgery, and all the surgeries that we can hopefully develop over the future will be a lot less labor intensive and more like that appendix where you can get fixed and get gone. I mean, I heard of the term, I thought old people get it. That's, that's just what I thought. I had no idea that an infant could, could have it. So and we saw Dr. Smith, and as soon as she looked at it, it was just, she said, okay, we have to get her into surgery. I actually, I talk to a lot of women now they see Oakley's glasses and they say, how do they know at that age? You know, if, they're, if there's a problem. So I tell her story and I just, um, I tell the moms if you ever are concerned, if you have, you know, any question that your child might be having eye problems, just go. It's like Oakley, she could have been blind. Now you can see what I'm doing. I mean, uh, look at me, what, what I'm doing. This was not really possible before. You know, I could do it, but not that. 
when you see clearly your speed goes fast and everything is different everything is different I think from now on going forward it will be different and it will be different because of what we plan to do with Kia Glaucoma. Now 10 years down the road um, you know there's Kia Glaucoma and um, there are uh, procedures, uh, practices worked on a procedure called the GAD procedure. And a year ago, I went back on a different mission trip, a mission trip where I, 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 I went to and I left with hope. Uh, we know knowledge, knowledge is one thing, but collective knowledge is very potent, very powerful. And that's what hopefully will take glaucoma care to the next level. And like Dr. Butler said, one person is not going to cure glaucoma. Our mission at Cure Glaucoma to fund transformational research, global missions, and providing access to quality care is incomplete without your help. We need to depend on you to help us by making a donation because every day counts. Please go to www.cureglaucoma.org to learn more about the cause and to make a donation. Join us as we change sight one person at a time. Oakley, if you can look over here. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, that'll do it. I wish that would work with adults. It's <laughs> <laughs> a necklace. Put it on. Oh, nice. So pretty. Oh wow. You are gonna be missy. Nice. Look at you. Nice. <laughs>